So today, I will talk more about the structure, property, relationships in lignin-based thermosets. One of the great challenges of our time is the transition towards a sustain sustainable society. In order to achieve that, what we can do is to limit the consumption of the fossil resources. So, in other words, we should stop using the finite resources, such as oil, and we should replace it to more sustainable materials or like sources, such as lignocellulosic biomass. And the lignocellulosic biomass is mainly composed by cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose. Today, I will talk more about lignin. But what is lignin? So lignin is a natural resource, it's an aromatic biopolymer, which can be found in wood and represents up to 30% weight of the dry content of this wood. It is biosynthesized by the random radical coupling of these three monolignols. And we have here paracumaryl alcohol, coniferyl alcohol, and sinaphyl alcohol. When incorporated into lignin backbone, they generate the free lignin units, which are called H, G, and S. And as, as you can imagine, these free monolignols can combine in different ways. So here you have a possible lignin structure, and we see that the repeating units can be connected to each other, for example, towards like beta-4 linkages, or 405, or beta-beta, or beta-5. And the lignin composition will vary a lot if we vary the distribution of these monolignols. So then, in different plant species, we'll find different kinds of lignin. So for example, in softwood, it will be mainly composed by G units. Meanwhile, hardwood and grass will find all of them. But this is how more or less native lignin look. In order to isolate this lignin, we can apply different methods. So then we get the technical lignin, which is completely a new kind of lignin. And nowadays, the main source of the technical lignin is the pulp and paper uh, industry, where the lignin is recovered as a brown powder, and up to nine. 98% of this lignin is burned. Our aim here is to show that we can make products of uh, added value. So the lignin has a high carbon content, it's highly aromatic, it has various functionalities, such as OH groups, for example, and it's cost effective. But at the same time, it's high, it has a high dispersity. Also, it has limited solubility, unknown structure, and these various functionalities can cause some problems in the next processes. In 2018, United Nations established 17 sustainability goals. And by using lignin and replacing the fossil-based materials, we can directly contribute to the achievement of at least four of them, such as uh, SDG 12, SDG 13, 14, and 15, which, may, which, which will make us to combat the climate change, ensure a sustainable use of oceans, and also protect our terrestrial ecosystems. The scientific challenges of this work was to obtain lignin fractions of different properties, investigate various functionalization approaches that enable the use of lignin fractions as thermoset ingredients, Tailor thermoset properties by using different lignin sources or crosslinkers. Study the nanostructure morphology of the lignin property, uh, thermosets. And also provide a deeper understanding of the structure property relationships of these thermoset materials. This thesis was uh, structured in three parts. So, in the first part, we discussed about separation approaches used here, and there were two. First is the sequential solvent fractionation approach, and the second, microwave solvent extraction. The second part was the chemical modification by allylation, which was done using allyl chloride or dialyl carbonate. 
And when we're using dial carbonate, we did two studies, one by conventional heating and one by microwave assisted heating. And the third part is actually studying the thermosetting gradients. So here we had two approaches. One, when we keep the lignin fraction constant and we change the cross-linkers. And the second one, we change the lignin fractions and we keep the cross-linker constant. So the key objectives of the included papers are as follows. The first paper was uh, focused on studying the effect of different cross-linkers on the thermosetting properties. The second and the third paper were focused on the impact of lignin source and the functionalization. And the fourth paper was focused on the effect of the separation procedure. So we'll start with part one, separation approaches and sequential solvent fractionation. So for this approach, we used two different lignin coming from softwood and hardwood sources. And here, what we did, we took the technical lignin, which is this one, we mixed it with four green solvents. So the first one was ethyl acetate, and we recovered a soluble ethyl acetate fraction. The second solvent used was it ethanol, and we got here the ethanol soluble fraction. And then we mixed also with methanol and acetone. And finally, we had also the residual lignin, which was called soft tooth insoluble, because it was not solubilized in the, before I had mentioned, four solvents. So if we look at the mass balance of this extraction uh, or fractionation approach, we can see that the difference between soft tooth and hard tooth the content of the ethyl acetate and ethanol fraction is almost half or more than half. And also, what I wanted to mention here, that the insoluble par, uh, fraction, the content is much higher in the soft wood. So what does it tell us is that the hard wood lignin using these four solvents in this sequence is more soluble. We also wanted to look how the molecular weight of this lignin looks like, and we did size exclusion chromatography, and we noticed that the molecular weight is increasing going from the ethyl acetate fraction to the insoluble one. Also, we wanted to quantify different functionalities in the lignin, which, for example, our targeting groups were like the OH groups, which can be, for example, aliphatic, carboxylic, or phenolic OH groups, and we did this quantification by using phosphoranamar, and it's shown as the millimoles of the OH groups per gram of lignin. The biggest difference between softwood and hardwood lignin is between the distribution of the functional groups. And we can see that the aliphatic OH, for example, it's higher in the softwood. The syringyl or C5 substitute OH is higher in the hardwood, and the guaiacyl OH is higher in softwood. And this is due to the distribution of the monolignols in lignin. Then our question was, but how these lignin fractions look at the nanoscale? And then we did a wide angle X-ray scattering, and we could find three repeating features, which were associated to D1, lignin superstructures, D2, to so T-shaped pi pi stacking interactions, and D3, to so the sandwich stacking interactions. So the biggest difference between softwood and hardwood lignin fractions was in the D2, so in the T-shaped pi pi stacking interaction. And we see that in hardwood, these distances are larger by almost one angstrom, which indicates that the hardwood lignin structure is more open. So the second approach here was to use microwave to extract lignin. So we used the same soft tooth technical lignin for this approach, and you, you, we used isopropanol as a solvent. We chose three different temperatures, 80 degrees, 120, 160, and we also had different extraction times. So first of all, for all samples, we use a ramping time of 20 minutes, and then we reach the desired temperature. Some of the samples were kept for another 20 minutes, and then all samples were cooled down. We also had a reference here, so what does it mean? We took the craft lignin, we mixed it with isopropanol, but this time the extraction was done at room temperature for around two and a half hours. So we got six soluble isopropanol fractions and six insoluble fractions. 
<coughs> the yield of this fractionation approach, so for the reference, was lower than 10%. But when looking at the microwave extraction, we see that we got an increase in yield. So now we have higher than 20. This is due to the increasing the, temper the temperature. We also increase the solubility. And also we have a slight increase by increasing the extraction time. But as you can see, at 160 degrees of a longer extraction time, the yield slightly decreased. This could indicate that during this extraction procedure, we have lignin repolymerization, for example. For the molecular weight, we also did SEC again. And here, the dotted black line represents the technical crafts lignin. All the extracted soluble fraction, here are for shorter times, here of longer times. We didn't notice significant differences between the fractions. But we saw that we were able, by microwave, to extract low molecular lignin fractions. Then we also looked at the insoluble fractions. And we noticed that the molecular weight was significantly higher, even compared to our reference. And also, if we look, by increasing the temperature, we also get an increase in molecular weight. And by increasing the extraction time, the molecular weight is further increased. So this is, again, a proof that during the microwave extraction, we have lignin repolymerization. The quantification of OH groups, we didn't notice significant difference between the soluble and insoluble fractions, but there was significant difference between the distribution of these OH groups. So, as you can see, the, for example, in the insoluble fractions, the content of the hepatic OH is significantly higher compared to the soluble fractions. Then we also have the guaiacetyl content is significantly higher in the soluble fractions. And we had a slight increase in the C5 substituting OH, which can further, let's say, prove that we have some lignin repolymerization, as this C5 could refer to the condensed linkages which you can find in lignin. So the conclusion for this first approach, for the first part, by doing sequential solvent fractionation, we're able, we're able to tune the molecular weight, vary the OH distribution, and also get lignin of different morphologies. And by microwave extraction, we get fractions of low molecular weight, which are soluble in isopropanol, but also of like higher molecular weight. We get definitely a higher yield, and it's also time efficient. So now it's time to go to the second part, where we talk about chemical modification and especially allylation. So by using allyl chloride, we are able to selectively functionalize lignin. So for this study, we chose only the soft to the ethanol fraction. And by using allyl chloride, the reaction was done at 65 degrees for 40 hours. We can see that we selectively allylate the phenolic OH. And the conversion was higher than 85%. This was proven by phosphor NMR. And here you can see that the phenolic OH signal drastically decreased. Meanwhile, the aliphatic and carboxylic remained unchanged. So the second approach was using the allyl carbonate. And here we had two different methods. So by using the allyl carbonate, we highly functionalized lignin this time. And here you can see we chose all the, soluble, all the softwood and hardwood lignin fractions, which were sequential solvent extracted. And then we used the allyl carbonate, 120 degrees, five hours. And we can see this time we target all the OH group present in the lignin. And we got a high conversion of the phenolic and carboxylic OH, and also partial allylation of the aliphatic OH, <clears throat> which you can also see now in phosphor NMR that the phenolic and carboxylic signal disappeared, and we had the reduction in the aliphatic OH. We wanted to compare how the morphology changed after the allylation. So here we have. As you can notice, the D3 is almost the same, but we noticed a difference in the D2 and also in D1. So this tells us that by adding the allele functionalities, we further increase the distances between this T-shaped pi pi stacking interaction, but we also increase the distances or the size of the D1. So, this also could indicate that the allele functionalities are placed on the edge of the aromatic rings. 
The second approach here was to use dial carbonate, but this time doing a functionalization using microwave heating. So what was interesting here to note that the reaction was complete after 30 minutes. And we get the same conversion, or even a little bit higher of the OH. So this indicates that by using microwave extraction and microwave functionalization, we can have reactions which are time efficient. Conclusions, the allyl chloride, we can obtain selective allylated lignin with a high conversion of the phenolic OH. And by using dialyl carbonate, we have a high functionalization, cardiac hinting all the OH groups. We also, the, the phenolic and carboxylic are almost fully converted to the allyl functionalities. Partial conversion of the aliphatic OH. And by using microwave functional, functionalization, we can get a time efficient reaction. Finally, the last part, which we'll talk about thermosetting resins. Here we had two approaches, as mentioned before. We'll start with the first one. But firstly, let me tell you how we prepare this thermosetting resins. So we have the thiolin crosslinker, we have the allylated lignin, and then we also use a co-solvent, which was ethyl acetate, for a better mixture. We dissolved everything, we placed it in the silicone molds, we let it overnight for the solvent to evaporate and have a nice film formation. After we cured it in an oven at 125 degrees for 20 or 50 hours, depending on the thermoset composition. And finally, we got these freestanding films. So in first approach, we wanted to study the effect of the crosslinkers. So for this approach, we choose the selectively allylated lignin for the soft tooth ethanol fraction. And here we had three functional crosslinkers. And the difference between these crosslinkers was between the number of the thiol groups. So you see we have a pre functional one, tetra, and hexa. So we thermally cured it and we obtained our thermosets, which contain around 66, 68 weight percentage of the lignin. The reaction was followed by FTIR. And we, what we did, we looked when the thiol signal completely disappeared. So then we also say that this is the curing time what you need. So for this thermoset, we used 20 hours. We wanted to investigate how the mechanical properties of this thermoset look like. So we use dynamic mechanical analysis. And here we look, for example, at the storage modulus. And we notice a trend that the storage modulus was decreasing for using a three functional crosslinker to a six functional one. Also, we saw that the crosslink density was increasing from three functional to six. And the most interesting here is that we obtained thermosetting, thiolin thermosetting materials with relatively high Tg, around 120 and 160. And you can see by choosing a different crosslinker, we can tune the Tg. So this was very good result. The morphology of this thermoset this time we identified also only D2 and D3, and we also didn't notice any differences at the nanoscale by changing the crosslinker. The second part, we used various lignin fractions and one crosslinker. So we wanted to see how we can tune the lignin or how the lignin fractions would affect the final properties, uh, material properties. So here for this study, we used all the highly functionalized softwood and hardwood lignin fractions, and we used the three functional crosslinker. So here we got lignin thermosets from softwood and from hardwood. The softwood had a slightly lower content of the lignin compared to hardwood. The curing performance of this thermoset was studied by real time FTIR, and here what was interesting to see is that the 95% conversion of the thiol groups for the soft wood was achieved much um, slower. Meanwhile, the hardwood were more reactive. Also, was what interesting that is in both soft wood and hardwood lignin thermosets, the thermoset coming from the ethanol et ethyl acetate fraction took like two times longer time curing. And we assume, we believe that this is due to the lignin uh, composition, which is mainly due to the distribution of the OH groups. 
So this also indicates that the hardwood uh, thermosets, they have a more open structure, and also that the allyl group is more accessible. For the dynamic mechanical analysis, we didn't notice any difference between the thermoset and the storage modulus. But for the cross-link density, if we compare with the previous thermoset, you can see here we have relatively a higher cross-link density. And also it's expected because we have a higher lignin functionality. For the TG, <coughs> we obtain a lower TG compared to the previous studies. And we believe that this is because the allyl content now is higher, which also increased the thioether content. And thioether content, thioether is a flexible linkage. So I think at this point, the thioether content strongly affects the thermoset TG. The morphology at the nanoscale this time, what was interesting to notice, it was that we have a new signal, D4. And we attributed this signal to the thioether structures. So the signal was around 3.5 angstrom. And also, we noticed that the D1, which is, again, referred to the lignin superstructure, the size or the distances of this superstructure increased also by almost 3.5 angstrom. So we, this was like, we thought that in this thermoset, the difference between the lignin fractions and the thermoset is only the presence of the thiol uh, crosslinker, so it must be attributed to the thioether structures. As a proof of concept, we took one fraction, which was allylated by using microwave heating, and we also wanted to see if it's possible to obtain lignin thermoset. So this time, we had around 55% of the lignin total content. We saw that the curing performance, we needed around 20 hours to achieve 95% thiol conversion, and also we got uh, the TG and the storage modulus in the same range. So, to conclude this part, by using one lignin fraction and three thiol crosslinkers, it's possible to tune the mechanical properties of the lignin. And by using various lignin fractions and one crosslinker, we notice that the hardwood lignin is more reactive compared to softwood, and also that the, we can produce thermosets from the microwave extraction of having the same properties. To conclude all this work, we showed that it was possible to obtain lignin fractions of different properties. We studied different functionalization approaches, and these approaches enab enabled us to use the lignin fractions as thermoset resins. It was possible to tailor the thermoset properties by using different extraction procedures or lignin sources, functionalization approaches, or cross-linkers. Also, a better understanding of the network and morphology of lignin thermoset was provided. As a future work, we would like to look more into the possible applications of these lignin thermosets and evaluate them. Also, new routes of the chemical modification can be explored using like, even more sustainable reagents. Uh, it will be nice to synthesize bio-based style crosslinkers, so have a fully bio-based thermoset, and also to understand better what is the exact effect of the pi pi stacking interactions of the lignin and thermoset properties. For this, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation for the financial support which, which made possible this work. Daisy German's electron synchrotron for the experimental facilities. A big thank goes to my supervisors, Mats Johansson, Stefan Roth, and Martin Lavoco. Thank you so much. To my co authors and collaborators, co workers at the VVSC, coating technology, and also the organic chemistry at KIT. And I also want to thank my family, my desk, and also all of you who are present now here. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Juliana, for a very interesting and very, very nice summary of your thesis work. So now we will come to the grilling part of the uh, defense. If you'd like to take a 
seat in the hot seat down here, and I'd like to invite back Assistant Professor 